Viper it won't. So 85, beyond 85 it won't hold in the brakes. But on the Hawk we can go up to 90% RPM and the brakes will still hold. So it will be this line up on the runway. Once you're lined up, the lead will then call and you'll see you move. And as soon as, as, soon as you're pretty much settled on the right and stop moving, you'll see a look, look over. Uh, he'll call Ninja. Well, we're, we'll be Ninja, you guys are Hellcat. So Flynn, you are Hellcat today. Um, you're taking the West Aerial Training Area. We're taking the East Aerial Training Area. Um, so I'll, I'll do this in example of Ninja. So I'll say Ninja Spool. That's brakes on. Make sure that's a big one. Brakes are on, fully on. Uh, spool up to 90% RPM. Obviously on the on the right hand side near the fuel gauge with your RPM gauges. So once you put it onto 90% RPM, your your brake should be holding. Make sure anti skid is not on, otherwise you will start to swivel on the spot, and that's how you'll know anti skid is on. So don't put it on until you're on the into the downwind. Okay, so keep that off. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a problem with the mod really. Um, so 90% RPM. Look across. Once you are ready as number two, you are going to give the thumbs up. The thumbs up is basically just pull the elevator back. And that elevator being backwards will then obviously make your elevator on the aircraft deflect. Um, it will look like it's gone downwards, pointing downwards. And that is basically thumbs up. Some people like to waggle it as well. Waggling is obviously easy. Uh, but constantly having to waggle while you're waiting for it is a bit of a fucking chore. So honestly, I just pull it back and we can see that your elevator's changed. And that's the thumbs up. Okay? Obviously, in real life, we would give the thumbs up, but we can't do that. <laughs> Not yet. A lot of technology to do so in DCS. So, our uh, uh, brake should be on 9% RPM. The lead's going to say this, ninja, tap, 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 release, and anticipate the release, okay? It's a bit like a drummer uh, hitting the cymbal to count the, the band into plates, and then they all kick in. Um, so anticipate the release, try and let go just a little bit before the release, and I find that was because of the internet lag, SRS lag, um, so yeah. If you ever heard someone transmitting through SRS and Discord, Discord tends to come through before SRS does. Um, so you, you can account for that little bit of lag there. Um, but yeah, try and anticipate the release and try and release pretty much just on or just a little bit before and you should you should nail it. The closer you get to releasing the brakes at the exact same point as one, the easier time you'll have. Uh, but you will have to move your throttle just a little bit just to make sure it's a little bit of play here and there to make sure. And of course, make sure center the lane. Don't fall back too far. If you fall back too far, you'll catch weight turbulence and you'll get flipped, which is not good. Um, so... Um, if if one starts barreling away from you and you're at full power, then you can call power or buster. Okay, it means the same thing. It basically means I'm full blast right now and I can't catch up. So pull back a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> but because we're at 90 percent RPM, we should be fine. Uh, so that is the uh, formation takeoff. Pretty simple. We'd have to do that. That's staggered. <clears throat> so being the lead pair and element pair, we are one and two. So we've got battle slash line abreast. That is a, a very nicely uh, good tactical formation. The reason we are 1.5 miles apart, um, and I'll go through this against the uh, fighting wing here. Fighting wing is really easy to get through. Hello, Splintered. Hello, Mark. Hello, guys. How are you? How's it going? We're just going through the sortie brief for sortie three. So welcome to uh, look. And you can even jump in in the, in the back of a jet if you want. <laughs> I'm not even joking, you can. Um, you can jump in either mine or whoever's, to be fair, and watch Sortie if you wanted. If that's what uh, you're here for, anyway. Yeah, I'm just, I've got Discord on my on my phone, so I'll, I'll just oh, tag along and I'll listen you. a bit. Uh, okay, got you. All right. So we've got, we've got Battle, um, where we are spaced apart by a 1.5. Now, obviously, this is not an exact set scientific number, um, but it is a, it's one we use when the training. It can be different uh, different lengths depending on what your needs are. There are a bit of a take your poison though. Uh, but anyway, 1.5 miles and when we are lying abreast, we are perfectly aligned with each other, preferably aligned. Obviously, it can always be out here and there. Um, versus fighting wing. Fighting wing is really manoeuvrable. Fighting wing is pretty much just hold within a point three on the attack and we don't have air to air attack and so we don't have that. But try and make sure you're around about four or five aircraft lengths aback. Okay, that should give you enough time for that one. If one does anything in front of you, you can follow. He should be able to fling around that jet and you can just follow wherever you need to go. Okay, it doesn't mean doesn't matter which side you take, left or right, you can follow him. So you can just you should be able to do like a, a full full um dog fight and you should be able to follow him everywhere in fighting wing. That is fighting wing. It's basically a very, very fluid, very, very maneuverable uh formation. It's just literally follow me. Try and pick a side though. Don't go right behind me because you're just going to get a bunch of weight turbulence and you don't want that. Um, and obviously, if we are low level and you try and cut that corner, 
Uh, obviously, if you go on the inside on the right, so if you're doing a right turn and you take the right side, you're going to straight into the ground, right? And if you try and take my exact line, you're going to get wake turbulence. So if you try and cut the corner, you, I'm going to go down below your nose. So the really good one to do in that one is just literally follow my exact track or whoever number one is. Follow their exact track along the ground, just a little bit above them. And that's a really good way of doing it low level. But it literally is just, look, honestly, just follow, follow me. Don't get too far back. Don't get too close because I might snap snap the other way and uh, uh, you go straight into the back of me. Okay. With fighting wing, wing um, one can push whatever power he wants. Just kind of just follow along. Okay. Follow along and just cut the corner to uh, to catch up or extend around the corner. Okay. Take whichever side of the triangle behind him that you want. Okay. That is fighting wing. A really bad problem with fighting wing, and this is why we have battle. If a hostile comes up behind us. We are pretty much defenseless at this point. We can't do something straight away that will kill that hostile. He's got both of us in the sight, so you can fox to both of us if he wants. That's two heat-seeking missiles into us, and we're pretty much toasted. Uh, we'll have to do something pretty exaggerate, exaggerate um, to make sure we can get out of that one and do something to fight back. Whereas if we're in battle here, and this is something we'll go through today and we'll demonstrate, um, if a hostile comes up behind us, we can, with this little uh, visual lookout, we can see, for example, we've got an F-16 here behind. One can easily see behind two. There is no tail end Charlie. Um, both of us can see. And if both of us break into the direction the hostile is coming from, so you can see this one, one and two, one is on the left, two is on the right. Two has a hostile or a bogey uh, behind him. We don't know. And uh, if it's a bogey that's not supposed to be there, if it, what I mean by bogey is unidentified aircraft, whether it be friendly or foe, more than likely foe, because chances are we'll know where the friendlies are. If we're getting escorted, we know we've got an escort, right? Um, if we, someone just starts to descend on us um, and you don't know who he is, treat it as like a, a potential hostile. So if this, and this is the case right here, and we've got a, a potential hostile aircraft, let's for, sake, for the sake of uh, sakes, this is an actual hostile aircraft, we know it is. Um, we can break right, both of them break right. The hostile's on the right guy, we both break right. One can easily get a Fox 2 straight on with a nice easy turn straight away. Uh, whereas Fighting Wing, we can't do that, and he's probably shot us both anyway at this point. Okay? Right, so that's a really good reason why we have a visual um, tactical formation when it comes to battle. Uh, both of us can defend really, really easily. Um, and we can push us out even further when it comes to being on the offense. But this is a really, really good, it's probably the best defensive formation you can have when you're in enemy territory. And this is really essential for the bombers. For anybody who's going fast and bombing, um, those guys, they can't BFM very well. When I say BFM, I mean dogfighting. BFM capability is significantly decreased when you've got heavy weights on you, such as loads of bombs and fuel tanks. Uh, we can't do that. If we can try and end the, the fight quickly, or even fight, end it before it's even begun, this is where you want to be. Okay, so 1.5 miles, that's really good. A quick snap turn into the guy. And the break as well. Break is with flares. So when we say hard right, hard left, that means just turn full power, max performance. When we say break, that means kill your engines, so not not obviously turn them off, but idle, and pump out flares. That's what break means. So if I said two, break right, break right, hostile your six, that means break right, break right. Obviously exaggerating that you need to go right now and you start pumping out flares because the chance is he's fired a, um, a heat-seeking missile at you at this point, a short-range heat-seeking missile. If it's an AMRAM, you're pretty much fucking toast, so what can you do there? Unless you can get yourself behind a hill. But if it's if it's that close, it's more than likely a heat-seeking FOX-2. So what we mean by that is obviously a heat-seeking missile, short-range, AIM-9s, R-73s, etc. Um, so break right, idle, um, fling yourself round that corner. Okay, and what's going to happen there is best point of action that the hostile is going to follow the guy who's breaking, and obviously with flares, so hopefully he'll be defeating that missile. The other guy's going to turn in and fox. But anyway, that's for a different day in terms of doing that. We can, um, Flynn, if you get around to doing it, obviously you can do go for a demonstration. Um, but we won't actually do actually that stuff and do do defensive ACM, but you'll do that on the team. We don't do that on the, on the 4 Squadron. Uh, so yeah, that's a really good reason why we have 90 um, battlefield, battlefield, battle and line of breast, same thing, formation. That is 1.5 miles apart normally. Okay, so to turn in this, we normally have the plan set route. We will normally do it in 90s as well, in full 90 turns. 90 turns are the very most standard turn. I'm sure you guys have potentially seen this, especially you, Yogi, and Mark on 41. So 90 left, 90 right. Um, when we say 90 left, 90 right, we mean by a tactical turn. If I go for the training syllabus, you should be able to see this.
here. So if I play this now, you can see 90 left, 90 right. It's pretty much, so here's 90 right. As the guy on the inside of the turn, he's watching the outside guy. So when we turn 90 right, the outside guy will turn first, as you can see just here. He turns, the 90 guy, the guy on the inside turns, just waits before, just before he goes around the, back, around the back of him, and then turns. Okay, so you can see that. If we do that execute, just like we can see on the diagram here, it means we'll come out perfectly line abreast once again. Okay, so wait before he just goes behind you. Okay, not before he, it's a roundabout with the hawk. It's a roundabout just past the wingtip, because the wingtip are really quite swept in the hawk. But in the 16, you have to really wait for them to get quite close behind you. Okay, well past the wingtip. And you can see 90 left as well here. The left guy just waits. Whichever side, if it's a, if it's a right turn, obviously the right guy waits. If it's a left turn, the left guy waits to make sure the guy going around the outside of the turn goes behind. Okay, and that's pretty much it for a 90 left, 90 right. Pretty simple stuff. Any questions with the left, 90 left, 90 right? Nope. Cool. All these turns, by the way, every single time you're in one of these turns in tactical battle, um, it's always max performance. So remember, full power, and the only thing that's going to keep you at the desired speed, the set speed, which would be 360 knots today, um, and that is your pull. You're bleeding the speed back to 360, 360 knots while you're at full power. Okay? So when you are, what we have is the right of way system to make sure there's no collisions. If you are in nicely in perfect position, there shouldn't be any chance of you colliding. Uh, but just in case, we always have this. It's the right of way system. It's the same right of way system you have with the car, right? If you're coming onto a road that's going to join up onto a different road, the people on that road, they already have the right of way, yeah? So um, when you're waiting, you look left, look right, make sure no one's coming and then go, right? So the guys who are on that track, they have the right of way. So if it's a 90 right or a 90 left, let's say it's a 90 right here, who has the right of way? Who's the one who's got to avoid? Yeah, who's the one who's already on the track? Who's the one who's um, who's going onto their track? So who's, who's got to avoid here? Outside man or inside man in the 90 right? Outside has to avoid. Yeah, outside has to avoid the inside because he's going to have to... He's, he's moving onto the inside man's track. Cool. When it comes to shackle... I don't know, I've just realised 41F, of course you've done this all before. Um, all good, Chris, yeah. So, Shackle, um, it's, it, if we don't have, we have the same right of way system, um, we're both going onto each other's track, track like a Shackle, then it's the lead will take the, uh, the right of way um, and the wingy will have to avoid. The way we normally avoid is going over the top. However, that isn't a full set rule. The reason for that is if we're at low level, if we're at low level, obviously going under, uh, underneath is not good. You'll go straight into a tree, right? So that's the reason why we don't have it SOP of going below. However, if we're up medium altitude, which we'll be doing today, when I say medium, it's still low level, it's you know, 3,000 feet. Um, so yeah. You can, as long as you avoid, whether it go up or over the top, around the back, doesn't matter. As long as you avoid, if you're avoiding, you're avoiding. Um, but the main one, the main SOP is to go over the top. Okay, so that's the shackle, that's the 90 left, 90 right. Here's the rotate, we're doing 180 degrees. Uh, Mark and Yogi, you'd get, you know this is an about turn left, or about, sorry, about turn starboard or port. We don't do it anymore, it's old. We say hook, um, rotate. So rotate, sorry, an about turn is a hook, sorry. So rotate is a rotate still. Um, rotate, it's used very, very minimally because it's just it just gets absolutely, yeah, it's just so much worse than a hook. Hook is just so much better in almost every single way possible. Rotate, honestly, they just do it for fun now to show off to people. So we just turn into each other and uh, you'll have to keep on the apex of the turn until heading in towards each other until you pass. Once you have then passed, you can then keep the pool going, okay? Perfect world, you won't have to keep going at the apex. You should hate each other at the apex, but it doesn't always happen. Remember, we're always imperfect in some way or form. Someone's moving on before the other. Okay. With the rotate, remember, as, uh, we're both on each other's track, so lead will take the right of way, and element, or sorry, element, wingy will be the avoiding measure. Okay, so normally over the top. Okay, and really try and cross really close. Okay, and um, that's really cool if you can do that. Um, if it possible obviously at the apex if you're not if you keep pulling and you don't if you keep pulling and you don't go towards each other at the apex what will happen is you'll start to close in each other if i pause that there and i get the whiteboard up 
this will happen. And this is a really common problem with the rotate. That's why we do hooks all the time now, because you don't have to do this. You don't have to wait for each other to come through. So remember, with a rotate, we've got blue and green. So blue is one, green is two. So I always do it. So as we go through, so if we go for a rotate here, let's say that's how far long it takes us to get into the apex. Okay, if we were to continue the turn, this is what happens. This is why you've got to go into the, into the thing. And then look at that distance there. That distance is not what we actually need, which is here. Okay, so make sure you continue to each other into the apex. Okay, into the apex right there. And then you maintain the turn. Okay. And then we'll come out the other side. And it might be that you have to space out a little bit more, in which we'd say Chaos, or sorry, Ninja, or Hellcat. Ninja, I'll say it with a Ninja. Ninja, widen. And that is basically widen back to the original um, to the original um, 1.5 nautical miles. It will be done visually, so you won't have a clue if you're actually properly there or not. But as long as it looks right, and we'll, then it should be fine. Okay, You should be able to flick yourself around onto the other guy's six, for example like this if you are correct okay so when if i can do this vessels that's one there's two i should be able to easily pull into this guy and not hit him okay that's how i always think about it also i should be able to if i was doing a 90 right here and i'm number one i should be able to get onto my heading track and go be going behind him okay if i am too close like this and I have still not hit my desired heading before I've crossed his track. It means I'm way too close. Okay, so if I'm like this, like that, and of course I'm not, I'm not heading there, so I know I'm way too close there. But visually looking for 1.5. So onwards, 90 left, 90 right. So 90 left. So ninja, 90 left, go. Ninja, 90 right, go. The way we have um, something a little bit different that we do compared to the original way. If it's a mutual right of way, we both have to go at the same time. Anything that's the same time, we need to both go on the exact same beat. So when it says shackle or rotate or a hook, these ones, and a hook is literally just an about turn for you guys, Yogi and Mark. Um, but we say hook like Captain Hook, because of course it literally just literally is a fishing hook at this point. A hook is just literally a max performance turn 180 degrees onto the onto the track six. And what we mean by track six is the six o'clock, our original six o'clock. Okay, so hook left, go. Um, and then what we do, anything that's both of us need to turn at the exact same time, such as a hook, a rotate, or a shackle, we we uh, the wingman should say two. We go on the beat after two. OK, because if what happens if we go for a hook turn and number one calls a ninja hook left um, and he goes. And two's left in the dirt for a little bit while he kind of processes it and goes, oh, shit, yeah. So if he starts his hook left. And uh, two continues a little bit further forward and then thinks about it. Oh, yeah, hook turn and then go. And then now we're out of position. Whereas in 90 left, 90 right, as the inside man, we just left to look across to the guy and wait for him to go on the back of us. Right. So if it's one of those, or it's a mutual right of way, such as a shackle, a rotate, and a hook, we wait for two to say two, okay? And I mean, there's no point, there's no harm in saying two after a left, 90 left, 90 right. Honestly, uh, it's not SOP, but there is no harm in saying two to, to, to tell the lead that you've acknowledged it. So I'm not going to, uh, if I'm number one, I'm not going to say anything anyway, if they're two's calling two all the time. Don't worry about it. As long as you, the the specifically for hook, um, rotate and shackle that we say to purely because we both need to go at the exact same time okay so as I say ninja hook left two bang that's the beat right there okay after um, any questions with that nope all right so let's go back to uh, we don't don't show intent do we yeah uh, so you can show intent this is the, the intent again it's just a bit more of a um, leaders of um, discretion here the, what, we, what Flynn means by the show intent is this so this is a side on view here that's the ground so the show of intent is this uh, if it's a 90 right and let's pretend that blue if this is a plan view blue is on the left here okay so blue is on the left green is on the right <clears throat> and we're looking from obviously green side so we're looking from this way here the show of intent if he if um, he calls ninja 90 right go the show of intent is this as we're moving forward the guy who's on the outside pulls up slightly so that's a bit 
bit too much. It's only about five ten degrees like that. And that pull up there, it shows green that we are going right now. Um, and uh, it's also to observe the path, the right of way path, to show green that I am now going to avoid you. Okay, so don't worry, I've got the avoid. And of course, goes across, and as he crosses, comes back down. Okay, as he crosses that point there he comes back starts to descend back onto the track on the, onto the bottom and that's really good for low level really really good for low level because of course you cannot go down when you're low level um the so yeah totally honestly it's not sop as per se something that dm taught us which is what happened he had a jaguar it, not him he wasn't involved in it but he, he knew the guys uh, a jaguar and i can't remember now flynn you might be able to i don't know if you've heard him talk about it um he had two guys. I think it was two Jaguars or a Jaguar and a Phantom. I can't remember now. Um, but they were doing a tack turn and um, they collided in a 90 right or a 90 left. It was in a 90 turn. And they collided at the apex as the outside guy went round the back of the green uh, of the number two. And he collided. Whether one was two, I can't remember now. Um, but because they collided, they decided, right, that's it. We're going to have, when we are um doing a 90 left 90 right we're going to make a little bit of an altitude gap bet between us because of the outside man he's gonna always gonna go up just a little bit um but uh, the, just remember if you are the guy who's avoiding just make sure you avoid every time just that that's on f for me anyway um so yeah just make sure that you are always always avoiding if you are blind in the 90 right just honestly go up just go up or go down and make your sure it's an exaggerated turn and that'll make sure you're guaranteed to not collide with the other guy okay so yeah that's the show of intent that's what Flynn's on about it's not exactly not exactly sop but it we 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 do it so yeah so anyway uh 45s and 40 honestly this point it's just all feel uh dm always used to like to call i say dm i'm on about danger man um so he, this is what we call using the force so as you can see here, if it's, an, if it's a 30 right, a 45 right, a 60 right, anything that's not a 90 degree, um, we have to use the force. So when it comes to it, the, the more shallow the turn, the more the inside man has to cut in, okay? So just imagine it as a 90, so the outside man turns straight away, almost 90 degrees. Uh, but the inside man is going to assist, that's why they call it a double assisted turn, because the inside man is also going to assist. The more shallow the turn, the more it's more like a shackle, really. It literally is just um, number two, almost making it a shackle. So the guy on the inside of the turn is going to turn in and uh, um, go towards one. Remember, the guy on the outside of the turn um, avoids on this one, okay? I know we're kind of going into each other's um, paths here, but outside man still avoids, okay? So if it's a 90 two doesn't avoid at all it doesn't do anything sorry if it's a 90 right so we've got this one here we've got one on the left two on the right um if it's a 90 right for example two's not going to do any kind of assistance right it doesn't need to but as we start to bring that that 90 upwards towards you know the track 12 two is going to start bringing himself in okay as you can see just here um he's going to start making it more look like a shackle okay to the point where if you brought that 90 line all the way to the track 12, so straight on ahead, it becomes a shackle, basically. So, yeah, that's how it goes. As, a, as a number two, just cut across, cut across the formation, all right? Number one, or sort of the outside, should I say, you pretty much just treat it like a 90, okay? Treat it a little bit like a 90, and you pretty much get there, all right? So it's a lot of just using the force, just cut in as number two. Number one, go across uh, over the top, preferably, and treat it a little bit like a 90. But then, of course, you're going to roll out um, as you, uh, you know, roll back in, sorry, to the desired reference point. Um, so if it's a, uh, obviously, we have the maths here. We have the exact point degrees. But honestly, I wouldn't bother trying to remember that for a 60 degree turn, you must assist by 15 degrees. I wouldn't bother with anything like that. Um, don't just use the force. If it's a 45 you know, the more it is, the more of a shallow turn it is, treat it more like a shackle, okay? Um, can, I, can I mention something? Go for it, Luke. Um So the the way I always think about this is, if you're if you're a wingman, the lead knows what heading he wants to end up at. Uh, so he'll turn onto the heading that he wants. What you need to do is turn towards him, whichever whichever direction he's he's calling, you have to turn towards him and make a 90 degree with his flight path. So once you've both done a, your first turn, you need to make yourself so you fly under him and he flies left to right. 
advantage Greece. And then, then you come out the other side and get the final reference heading. And hopefully that will bring you out in, in battle on the other side. And if in doubt, if everything goes wrong, just go, just turn in towards him and then turn out once you've kind of crossed after three, four seconds onto reference heading. And then hopefully you might be there. So yeah, these ones are a lot of using the force, just a lot of just turning in and trying it out. Um, so yeah, we don't use these very much. I rarely use double assisted just because it's quite annoying. Um, but yeah, so they are used a few times, but not that very many. Okay, so we will have a go at them and we'll go from there. And if it's above that, so if it's 130 knot, 130 left, um, you can see here the 120 left. The way it works with that one is actually quite easy. As the inside, oh, sorry, as the outside man's nose hits you on the inside, you then go. Okay, and you just treat it a bit like a hook, but you're not going all the way around. Okay, so you can see on this picture just here, um, as the inside man, sorry, the outside man's turning, and as an, as the inside man, you're looking at him. And his nose, as soon as his nose hits you, that's your time to then swing around and go for a bit, uh, max performance onto the reference heading. Really quite easy to honest with you, doing 120s, 130s, 140s. And uh, again, a lot of it's just using the force. Okay. One thing I also want to mention with the tack turn, such as a 90. For a 90, if you are close together, the, the turn, the, the cue to turn looks earlier, as you can see here. This line here. This line to the dot dashed line to the solid line there, it's the same distance, right? Because that distance is there is how long it takes that inside fighter to turn onto the track track heading, right? Um, so if the guy is closer to you, yeah, the guy is closer to you, it looks a lot earlier because he's close, as you can see just here. Whereas if your if your wingman's the guy who's in the, the in, outside of the turn, sorry, is further away, it looks a hell of a lot later. Okay, it's still the exact same distance that because it's just your as the inside fighter. It's, it's just all it is. It's just that amount of time it takes you to then turn max performance onto that heading. All right. So that's just one to make sure of. All right. So that's a big one. Uh, any questions with any of this? I know there'll probably be maybe a quite a few, maybe not so much from the guys for X41. No questions. No, I'm quite good. Quite good. No. Cool. Right. That's pretty much it. Okay. So to get into a battle, what we'll say is ninja battle right or battle left reference and this and then go so bat ninja battle right reference zero nine zero go and off you go two and now you go um if one's feeling nice he'll help you out the way to do this is 30 degrees off on the reference heading so if it's a battle right a reference of uh zero nine zero then you'll go off right one two zero full power and just look keep looking across trying to maintain that line of breast for formation okay as you start to expand out and then as you get to around about the points and we'll probably say you know there about that'll do um and then just roll out their reference heading bring that power back to maintain th the reference speed which is 360 knots okay and if we are nice we'll also help out by going 30 degrees our way as well okay right i think we i think we can call um in other places uh battle right the wingman goes out or Playtex go. Or Playtex, yeah. Both both go 30 degrees out, so you get into battle much faster. And there you go. Any questions? Uh, you talked about formation landings. Formation <laughs> landings. Yeah, so pretty much we'll uh, we'll as we're coming back um, to tower, obviously get into arrow, and this is a big one for the thinking wingman. As we come in, and I'll get Google Maps up for this one. It's a lot easier than you think. It's just literally maintain formation, listen to uh, uh, listen to leads calls as it goes through. So here we are. As we come back in, obviously we've got the um, the zone around that criteria. Once we come in, ten miles. Um, obviously we'll change the tower there. So as we come in, runway two eight will probably be the active. Um, obviously we can't hear the ATIS on the Hawk, so we'll just go with two eight all the time today, Flynn. Um, as we're going around, um, as as our, as the one starts to lead in, and you can hear him making radio calls. Um, tower ninja join 28 2992 or whatever the QFE is set as a starting to come in and before he's even called it try and maintain echelon right just like you did in the last sortie try and maintain echelon right when he calls it and also when he's lying on 28 you know he's going to say echelon right soon so there's no harm and actually we actually what something we actually push for is what we call the thinking wingman and make it work 
Um, so as he's coming in, he's going to call you into echelon right. So start getting into echelon right, start to close up, okay? It's a little bit like going through the cloud. So, you know, if, if number one's about to go through the cloud, you want to close up so you don't lose him, right? And there's no chance of a... Uh, if you still visually see him through the cloud, you're you're good to go. There's no there's no problem of prob probably hitting each other in the cloud, right? Was that Mark? Who was that? That was Mark. Um, so as we're coming in, um, start to close up into echelon right. He will then say, um, flap, go. So once we're within limiting speed, 250 knots, flap, go. Uh, half flap, remember. And then gear, go. And remember, when the gear comes down, you have to re-trim it. Uh, trim nose up or down. I forget which way it is now. Um, I think it's nose down, to refer. But yeah, once one's coming in, he's, just an, he's basically just doing a really nice, steady trading approach. Okay? And then just basically just maintain the reference all the way. Okay? And uh, yeah, once you are, what I like to do, uh, this is something I like to do, it's, it helps me out a lot. Um, when I'm looking across, I can always maintain lead, uh, visual on the lead. But one thing that really does help me with this, because of course power equals, because you got your flap down, it equals lift. Uh, the, obviously flaps work like a ramp. If you've got speed, you'll go flying off the ramp. If you don't have speed, you won't make it up the ramp and you'll therefore come back down the ramp and, you know, you basically decrease a lot of speed. It acts like a parachute. It will stop you right there. Um, so with the power, sometimes you can really get shot upwards or dragged downwards and therefore you'll lose it. But if I have half of my vision looking at my lead and maintain the reference, remember the leading edge of the wing is your primary reference. You should be looking down that. And then just maintaining that echelon right spacing. Um, but what I try and do is I try and keep the velocity vector around here and the other part of my view around these numbers just here. Okay, and if my velocity vector starts to decrease like mad, obviously I can I can see then uh, I'm going to be going down big time or up. So I'll try and keep my velocity vector around there uh, with using my speed. Okay, we're using my power, sorry. But basically, big time, if anything goes wrong, just literally just maintain reference, 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 reference the entire time on lead. Because if you maintain the reference on lead the entire time, you'll be fine because lead's going to land on the runway and therefore you will land on the runway. <laughs> okay, that is pretty much it for the formation landing. Okay, just remember it's um, um, you as we hit land, um, once you are landed nicely, start to slow down as number two. Um, don't go barreling out in front of number one, okay? You're looking to, once you've landed nicely, don't do it straight away. Um, land nicely, just for the cameras, because we want that camera pick. Of course, I'm joking here. Uh, but basically, what you try and do is eventually then is slow down and get behind number one, okay? And if you're slowed down behind number one, you, you basically you can take off. You can really leave, uh, leave the runway at the same time. Now, one will be on the left, two is on the right, and the leaving side, the slow side, is the left side here. If the side was right, then two would have to say slow speed. A little bit like what we do with, with a um, with an overhead brakes. You know, when it says two says slow speed, then one can leave the next exit because he knows two can two can make it. It's a bit like that. It, however, it's a little bit different reason. If it's on the right hand side, one wants to turn over to the right hand side, but the problem is he's he's on the path of number two, and if two is not slow enough, he'll go barreling into one and big fireball. Right? Um, obviously don't want that. So once you are slow. Um, you should be able to get behind number one. You won't need to call slow speed because the exit side is on the left-hand side and therefore one can make it anyway if you are not slow speed. But in theory, you should be slow enough because you've come at the same exact same speed anyway. Okay, so once you've basically start to slow down and get behind number one, okay, on the slow side. And there you go. That's pretty much it. So the formation landing is just going to be a little bit of feel really, seeing what you can do, see if you can try and push your skill. Um, so there isn't that much to do apart from hold the reference and try and put the flap down. He'll say flap, flap, go, gear, gear, go, and off you go. Okay. Can Maybe I can I, can I say the, is the there is a difference um, uh, when you're flying in echelon with the gear up, you use the power and you go forwards and backwards uh, to maintain that forward aft thing using using throttle. When you've got when you've got your gear down and you're in echelon. Uh, the throttle is up and down rather than forwards and backwards. It's very hard to to move forwards and backwards when you've got your gear down. So it's important to, to uh, be quick whenever you're given instructions. You, if you fall back, it's quite hard to make it up again. A big one for that is pushing forward. If you have to push forward with your throttle, you have to push forward as well with a stick to counteract that upwards, upwards draft. So yeah, yeah, let's see how you guys can go with it. Uh, any questions with the formation landing? Thank no. You.
Cool. Right. And just remember, if you if you idle while you're in the gear and flap, you will drop like a stone, depending on how how much you leave it. Uh, let's go a quick quick out brief, and then we're gonna get going. We server one, always server one. So, unless uh, yeah, something's gone wrong with server one, then we have to use server three. So, um, you, uh, Flynn's, Flynn's flight, you guys are Hellcat. My flights, me and Matt, we are Ninja. Backbox, Hellcat 230, Ninjas 231. This is Salty 3. Uh, bingos and Jokers, as you can see just here. Joker 1000, Bingo 500. Uh, twos, just make sure you call that, because obviously um, we want to make sure we are, we are the same. We should be around about the same point anyway. Uh, but make sure we, that's a big one to call, okay? Uh, BFM, we don't have BFM base height, don't care about that. So formation, everyone's clear of the formation landing and takeoff. And if anything happens to the runway, so like someone crashes into the runway and now we have a 2D image of a uh, of of a pit of destruction, but a 3D actual pit you can fall into and destroy yourself. So if, if the runway is black, then go to Paphos, there's the diversion. And everyone here has got track IR or VR before. Um, and everyone knows the plan of action. So out to the left, off to the aerial training area. Hellcat has west, Ninja has east. Um, do some fighting wing. So turn around, um, do some crazy aerobatics. Just basically follow one. Um, and then once we're ready, we'll go into battle. Do some battle turns, some attack turns. Then recover for a formation landing. And biz. All good? Yep. Cool. Brilliant. Right. If you need a buy a break, go for it now. If not, we should be good. Um, what we'll do to, to deconflict is um, me and Matt will go down to Red Channel and uh, and come back in once we're finished. Cool. See you there. Right. See ya. All right, Yugi, how are you doing? Hey, Phil, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, mate. Do you have a, a real name that I could call you by? Uh, Yogi is my real name. Is it? Excellent. It is, sir. Well, that's uh, unexpected. Yeah, unexpected, and yes, I do get a lot of stick for it. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Um, it's right, Yogi Bear, isn't it? <laughs> ah, yes, Mark. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. Sorry, I was just staying quiet there during the brief. Sorry, I'll leave you guys to it because I know you want to crack on with your training. Um, you but yeah, in the, in the back seat, buddy, if you want to come. Uh, no, I I can't get on uh, the PC. I'm just I've got you on my iPad at the moment. I was just listening into the brief, really making sure I've got all the correct uh, settings done for my startup tomorrow night. So yeah, but I'll leave you guys to it. Um, are, are you going to be streaming it? I'll be uh, I'll be recording it, so yeah. Oh, so I'll see you. oh. you'll see it in the morning. All right, guys, have a good flight. I'll catch Cheers you later. Bye, bye. Right. Okay, well, Phil, we're in Hellcat, aren't we? Yes, we are. Roger. Um, so I'll take Hellcat two. Yep. Uh, when I was working at General Dynamics, uh, we had some army guys in, and they uh, there's a chap called he was a warrant officer. He was he was Blair, and he was Lionel. <laughs> and every, everybody called him Lionel. I didn't. I think his name was Ian, but nobody, even his wife, called him Lionel. So. Oh my word! <laughs> so, yes. I haven't heard that name in a long time. I know, I know. Right. Okay. So um, I'll see you online. Um, I'll be in Hellcat One. Uh, set up, set up two thirty on the back box, but we can stay on uh, Discord as well. Um, as a, as a back, back stop. Uh, is there anything you want to talk about? I realise some of that was quite fast. It was. Um, just out of curiosity, the, uh, uh, first and foremost, the what, uh, um, RAF skins that we're using today, mm. is it the 100 years or the, just the ZK020? I don't think it matters either way. Okay, um, Request so rearming. 100, 100 squad. Okay. I'll obviously Copy. follow you out onto the, the tarmac. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'm, I'm not just going to go and let you swing in the wind. I'll talk you through it as we go. But just if there's anything you uh, you wanted off the back of that. Uh, not at this stage. Actually, I'll ask you any questions in the air. Cool. Uh, the one thing I would say, um, all the turns, the tack turns, uh, it's a standard turn um, for the jet. So you 
go full throttle uh, as you as you start the turn, um, and then Rearming you complete. pull just enough so that you don't slow down. So we start, so we start, we're doing it at 360 knots, and you pull hard enough so that you don't slow down. That you keep that 360. There's and it'll be about three and a half G maybe, okay. and and we'll just you'll have to learn what that is for this day at the altitude that we're doing it at because it's always it always varies a little bit. So you've got to be looking at your G and your, and your speed as you're doing it so that you do the right kind of radius of turn and it matches mine. Roger that. Okay. Uh, just uh, one um, word of uh, caution. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in trouble with SRS. All right. Um, only because um, the settings... Uh, so I'll be I'm testing a new setting today, so just mm -hmm. FYI, I might uh, default to a Discord if required. Yeah, and that's that's absolutely fine. I'll I'll be on SRS so I can do the um, external radio calls if you know so that uh, Rich knows that where we are. But uh, if you're not on SRS, it's not the end of the world. We've got Discord. Roger that. Thanks, Phil. Really appreciate that. And I appreciate, yeah, no by the way, the time that you're spending. So no, no, it's, it's grand. It's great. I enjoy it, and this is the, uh, this is one of my favourite ones. Yeah, attack form is is fun. Good, good. Um, I'm just going to drop off and switch computers. I'll be back on in two seconds. Copy that. Bye bye. Brilliant, thanks. So, what's your what's your flying background, Yogi? So, I flew with um, uh, Royal uh, RAF Air and uh, I flew oh, yeah. with the 41 Squadron. So, we were flying F 18s. I did about uh, 1400 hours on the F 18. Awesome. That's simulated hours, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, I uh, did when I was set up for a really ground attack. Mm. Uh, I was trained by uh, William Pixton, I don't know if you know that name. No. Um, and yeah, I went through their OCU, uh, obviously it was the F 18, so my desire is to move to the. Um, oh, jolly good, that's where I am. Yeah, looking forward to it, mate. Uh, as well, so. But this T45 is fantastic, isn't it? It is fun, isn't it? Really good fun, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the arse having to do an OCU before you get straight to the F16, but I actually, actually quite enjoyed, quite enjoyed it. it. I'll be honest, uh, Phil. Um, it's, it's, it's great to actually go back to basics. Um, yeah. Because it helps, I don't know, me hold, hone my skills. So I've been just practicing the last. Yeah, like pure stick and rudder stuff. Yeah, it's good fun.
So have you done, I assume you must have done tack turns at some point in this before? Uh, yeah, so uh, I've done it in the F-18 um, quite a bit, um, it, but it was all at low level, mm -hmm. so yep. pretty much like you know, 200 feet and 420 knots. Yeah, yeah. We'd do a tack turn, you know, 90, 90, 90, 90. It would go by the waypoint so it's built into the system. So on the nav. Ah, right, yeah, yeah. So nobody actually said you have to do a 90 left. Yeah, you just made it work. by the waypoint and you would take the turn from the outside between two and a half and one and a half miles from the waypoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And affect the turn. Um, and the outside man usually went high, obviously, yeah. because obviously we're at low level at 200 feet, so... Um, yeah, that was the SOP uh, that we would operate. So you'll find me probably from the outside going a little bit high. Yeah, yeah, that, no, that's 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 pretty cool. That's what I, that's what I expect as well. Um, uh, the stuff that I've learnt, you you show intent by going up and then down, rule in Sorry. and go high. Challenge for me is whereas uh, uh, within the F-18 got that helmet-mounted display, and also on your SA screen, you could get down to granular five miles, so you could actually see yeah, yeah. where your where your uh, partner was, so you could affect the turn accordingly, uh, and you could see him because it was highlighted in your uh, helmet-mounted. Yeah, and the, the data, the uh, data link. Up. Give, and it gave yeah. you distance as well, didn't it? Exactly. Whereas this is this is this is Mark One eyeball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 interesting, especially when you you switch from uh, Hawks to F-16s or yeah. Phantoms or whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. Uh, it always the size of the jet is different, obviously. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think the F-18 is bigger than the F-16, so that's going to be a interesting. Yeah, and this is and the Hawk is tiny, relatively speaking. So. Yes, it is. One and a half miles is quite. I think the F-18 is about twice the size. Isn't it? Yeah. So I, I wouldn't. So a mile and a half is quite a lot, I think. I agree. Uh, for this size aircraft. For this size aircraft, um, uh, I would. Play, the places I've been, it's more like a mile. Um, but you know, anywhere between a mile and a mile and a half, you just make it work. Let me see if I can get tack on up. Okay, I think the tack on set for uh, already set for criteria. Uh, mm. Yeah, I've set it. I've had to manually do it, but yes, I've done it. So, Ninja. If you can manage it, I'd set two eight six on the course bar. Two. Two eight six set. And that just gives it makes makes it easier for me when we're coming back into land. Where we are. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so if we set two three zero in the back box, and we'll check that to see if your SRS is working. Check down, ninja taxi two eight. I don't know if you've got your SRS set up um, like this. Um, my front box, I've got set up so that it just goes into my left ear, and my right, my back box goes into my right ear, so that you know there's a. It gives you a real clue as to where you're hearing it from. Yep, got that uh, exactly the same as you just mentioned. Cool. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, no, I didn't hear you. Well, you didn't hear me anyway. Do you want to see if you can uh, um, come on the back box?
They're just on the uh, short fun. find out that I've parked in the It all looks the same to me.
So did your SRS work pretty well? Yeah, yeah. it wasn't too bad. It wasn't as bad as yesterday. Um, so I don't understand most of what you're saying. Uh, it's the realism piece where sometimes you struggle with uh, to hear. Uh, so I, I set my realism to zero. I just want to hear clear. My um, my ears aren't good enough to actually. When when I was actually flying PPLs, radio was one of the hardest things I thought. Yeah, I would just get rid of all the squelches and fizzes and whizzes and all that stuff. That doesn't help at all. Do you want to spend a couple of minutes working your SRS out? Yeah. One shot down. It was fun, mate. It was really fun. Thanks for that, Phil. Hello, can you hear me? Phil? Right, back on. I feel. Oh. Hi there. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Brilliant. How was that then? Anything concerning or upsetting? I was going to ask you that question. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it was really good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Excellent. That's the only thing, really. I don't think there's anything I can really say. Uh, I just, it's just about finding out what the the actual size of the aircraft is when it's battle. We'll, we'll look at the tack view and see how far apart we actually were. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh... Um, I should have called called you into echelon before the gear. Right. It make, makes it a bit harder to, for you to get into into echelon. Yeah. Um, but I think you managed it pretty much anyway. I think I was just about there, yeah. Yeah. By the time I looked round on the ground, you were right in the right spot, so I'm assuming that you were there all the time. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I mean, you'll see it probably on the... Uh, on the... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, on, the, on the attack view. Uh, there was one point where I kind of overshot you. I was going in too fast, and my for some reason my air brake oh, yes. didn't come out, so it didn't deploy, so I had to come round again. Yeah, that well, that was partially my fault because I was my speed was a bit all over the place at that point. Okay, well. So um, I'm going to take fun. take no, equal I loved, there. I love doing the uh, the flying was it flying wing was it yeah yeah fighting wing fighting wing that's it yeah really enjoyed yeah. that yeah it doesn't really seem to it, it shouldn't really be that much fun. Um, I think it feels bad, but yeah, it is. It's it's really? it's good. Good that, isn't it? <laughs> no harm in enjoying, right? No, I have to say, I, I never, I actually don't like leading very much because I find flying formation a lot of fun. I'm the same as you. I I prefer flying on the wing and testing my skills. Yeah, yeah. We did some uh, me and Rich, RJF and. Poacher, I think you've met Poacher. Uh, I think I've heard the name. I'm not sure if I've met him. All right, I thought he might have done one of your lessons. Anyway, he's um, he's not another eleven squadron guy. Uh, we did um, we did some formation arrows, the three of us, in the in the little hawks. At the end of last year, and it was just brilliant fun. But I, but Poacher was the lead all the time. It's not much. It's no fun flying the lead. But. Yeah. Uh, Flying the wing is really, really hard, but really, really great. Yes, I'd agree with that. Looks like they're looking at something on red channel. Do you want to pop down? Or do you want to debrief here by ourselves? Should we? Um, I mean, I don't mind, but I thought we'd debrief ourselves and then go down of course. and join them. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Let me just find the attack view. Can you see that? Roger. I always forget that when that these are hot jets when you crew in. So you've got to be on your on the two brakes immediately, otherwise you uh, you yes, away. yeah, I, 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 that was my fault. I, I actually went forward and forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I, I, I don't do this often enough to remember that these are hot jets. Yeah. <laughs> Notice we had a C-130 cross our nose. Yeah. And somebody was flying it, which uh, is obviously the mod. Yeah, yeah, I, but I'm surprised that it's in. Well, it is one of the mods you download, I think, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's one of the free mods. Good fun, though. Yeah, yeah, so it's always good to uh, have other aircraft on the on the server when you're doing stuff. Yeah, I see Ninja got up first, so that's fine. Interesting, interesting to see their formation take off. Yeah, yeah. Stop, stop.
I always find formation take ups much e take offs much easier when you know, he's moving forward a bit there. When you don't have really high power, if you just set a, a sort of a medium setting and will let yourself take off. Yeah. After afterburner makes things much harder. I nearly did what Matt did here. Yeah. I nearly overtook you. I didn't realise because I thought you'd be you're at full power, but you're at ninety percent, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, I'll remember that next time. I just managed to recover. Yeah, I've got. I, I so I you. obviously I have to make sure that you've got enough power over me. So that if yeah. if you're if you get if you get swept for, you know far back, then you've got another five percent. Yeah, exactly. To go faster than me. Roger. It's quite a sedate takeoff, and it's not it's not just full power, full full beans and and go. Yeah. Let's just check my position. Bit of lag there, wasn't there? Yeah, there's a bit of desyncing, I think. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, that you were Cobra, weren't you? Yeah. Don't know why you're going as Cobra. Ah, uh, that's me. That's uh, just call sign. See how I started to just catch up here. It's just nice. Just managed to recover. Yep, can't argue with any of that. Let's see if we get the gear up. The flaps up. Yep, very nice. Can't argue with any of that. So I think there, that was a, I was trying to, so we were swept there. Yeah. So I was I was doing a thirty degree check turn. I see. Yes. Yeah. To and, try and uh, to try and get us back into. Yeah. That yeah. was my fault because my uh, SRS didn't quite hear you well, so I need to. That's uh, fine. Yeah. yeah. I did. I did get the impression you were struggling to hear me. Yeah. But um, sometimes. I thought you were actually asking me to get closer. So. <laughs> All right. No. No. <laughs> And then you said, no, no, get out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, this is where we did the first 90. Yep, so that is, there is just about a mile. Yeah. 5,000 feet. So just a touch late. Yeah, but you but you ended up a bit closer. Yeah. Which is interesting. But anyway, that's yeah, that's you know that's good. Let's not uh, get too picky. Mm -hmm. 
See, I think that G could be higher. Yeah, you're right. Should have been three Gs. Yeah. But that's all right. It all worked out nicely in the end. Yeah. Still the right distance between and us. Still the right distance, yeah. Hook. Good G. Lovely. That was a good one, that. Yeah, yeah. This is where this is where I tried. Finally, managed to widen it a bit. Um, yeah. The problem is the hook gets really, really tiny. Oh, this was the shackle. Okay. Shackle. I think I was slightly lost visual here, which was why I think I was slightly hesitant. Yeah, so I, I think the difference is, yes, yeah, so, so perhaps a little bit hesitant, but also it was a sl a sort of a slightly slow G. It was. So it needs to be quite a, not a tight turn, but a that's a sort of a wide. And then you left a bit too long there at the end afterwards. But that's no big deal. That was a bit better. Yep. I think you should have been above and I should have been below, but once once you're once you've ruled in and I'm above, there's no you just have to accept what it is and and stay below. Yeah. Nice. It was difficult to see, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. What um are you using a, a VR headset? No, track IR. Oh right, cracky. Uh, the the uh, VR makes me dizzy. Oh no! That's a shame. I uh, I love VR. It's a real. Uh, I mate, I, I I have used it, but if I use it for too long, then I start getting. Yeah, yeah. Sick, feel I feel a bit sicky. Strange phenomenon. Phenomenon that. So what's what? It says phenomenon. A lot of phenomenon. I can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. You know what I mean. There you go. Yeah. You know I was just I mean. enjoying listening to you try to say it. Phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> so go that route... you Are you still still going for your brief? Fuck. Uh, debrief. My bad. Yeah, yeah. Just quickly, we're we're not far off finishing. Sure. So all I was saying was there was that was a rotate. So your your turn is way too wide. It was, yeah. I was, um, I was looking for. I couldn't see you. I lost visual. So. All oh, right. Well, yeah. Um, so you're going to be erring on the side, side of caution. Side of caution. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to go into you, and then Fair I spotted enough. you, and then I uh, came back towards you. Yeah. Back into fighting wing. Oh, I love this through the valleys. That was fantastic, Phil. <laughs> that was so much fun. It's like good. one of the main reasons you use fighting wing for valley flying. Absolutely, it's fantastic. Yeah, good. Especially through uh, the Cyprus uh, part of the map, it's it's really nice. And and having been to Cyprus several times myself, recognizing some of the uh, the spots was nice. Nice. I've actually been to this lake here coming up. Hey. <laughs> the dam. Um, so I've been, there's a dam at the end. Yeah, right, right there. there. Yeah. And I've driven across that. Sick. Excellent. Uh, 
is where I slightly uh, missed it. Yeah, I'll just uh, zoom past that. I'll tell you what's quite cool is if you learn the um, the Mac loop in uh, Flight Simulator. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love doing that. Yeah. We've been on it a few times as a team, uh, for 11 anyway. Uh, we haven't done it in a long time. It's good fun. It's just annoying when things go wrong technically. I'm hoping Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 will be a lot smoother of an experience. Uh, any cost for that yet? Say again? How much does it cost? Probably around I've... about 40, 50. I'm about the same as I've years. never brought it. I just used the um, Game Pass. Oh. oh. Okay. Didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it's been on Game Pass the whole time. Yeah, yeah Xbox Game Pass, yeah. I bet it'll be like 60, and then there'll be a deluxe 80. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there is. I know there is. Seen, seen it. With that, um, next time I will call you into Echelon sooner and give you a better chance of getting your Echelon right. Roger that. But I thought that was quite good. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. No awesome. worries, Yogi. Just need you to help me with the SRS so I can just sort it out. Make sure it's yeah, sure. the same problem. Yeah, I just want to make sure I've got the settings right, so I was just going to compare mines with Phil. Yeah, do it. I didn't hear you on radar, so that's good. Yeah, we were we were there, but we didn't say very much. Yeah, yeah. Not needed, did we? Yeah. I'm going to post in to the media while you guys sort that. Post the same oh, ones. Share my screen, uh, Phil. Oh, I'll just be I'll be I'll be two seconds. I've got to. Uh... Uh, switch the other computer with the SRS on it. I'll be back okay. in two. Cool. How was yours, Matt? Yeah, it's good. Had a few hiccups, but a few, a few lefts and rights were wrong. But there we go. <laughs> I've never got my left and right confused before, but when you're in the sort of that intense environment. You've got a lot going through your mind, just keeping your speed out, feed everything in your life. Absolutely. And the calls are coming quick, and you're like, whoop, whoop. Oh, that's a nice shot, that is. Like that, Rich. Got some more. Oh, nice. Nice. At least you can tell which aircraft's mine. <laughs> the 100. I've got 100 on as well. I should really have four squadron, but it doesn't always happen. The funny thing is, I, I see I all of you using the Marines colours, and I can't understand That's why. That's really weird. Um, you definitely have the liveries in the correct place. Yeah, do you remember we fixed it the other night? So the yeah. liveries are there, because I, I loaded the 100 one. But when I uh, start in the aircraft, it's always in Marines. <laughs> I have to physically change it through using the ground. That's crew. really weird. It should be loaded with a uh, four squadron by default. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. Maybe I need to have another look at it. Back with you. To check it's there properly, you just go to the mission editor and see that they're in there. Uh, yeah, but that would be yeah. through the server, wouldn't it? No, if you just make your own mission, go to your own mission editor and then plop down a P45. Okay. And then check that the both the liveries are there. Okay. Then that should mean that they're correctly installed when you join the server. They should put it in because they would have pre-selected it in their mission. Okay, I'll try that. But then you're loading it anyway. Did you say for yourself? So yeah, that uh, would imply that it's already there. It's a bit odd. Yeah, exactly. So because so, I put the one hundred years livery on 
um, but I did it manually and it worked so it's just a bit bizarre DCSism I'm guessing <laughs> okay I'm back with you have you got your uh, SRS settings up yeah hang on I'll just share my screen Yeah. Boys, I'm gonna leave you to it. Good, good job today, Matt. I'll see you in BFM yeah. or whoever takes you. Yeah, and, uh, I'll be on tomorrow. We We're all on. Yes. Um, I've got Mark tomorrow, so I don't know who's gonna be having who, okay, but cool. we'll figure out. We'll have plenty of people. Thanks, oh. Thanks, Rich. Okay, I don't know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So I'm on the settings screen and SRS. So should we go from the top? Yeah, sure. So, so I've got on, off, on. On, off, on. Yeah, correct. And reset for offs and then on. Correct. Two ons. Two ons. Um, voice detection off. Yep. Um, I don't think that really matters, all that stuff. Uh, recordings all off. Uh, recordings all off. Right, okay, so... Well, I mean, I, I don't think it makes any difference. You know, it's, I don't think it's going to be... It just means it'll take up space on your hard drive and then you'll probably forget they're there. And then in five years' time, you'll go back and you find you've got five years' worth of audio. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I've switched it off then. Uh, miscellaneous settings, off, off, set path. Yeah. On, off, on. Yeah. Off, off, on. Correct. Uh, profiles default. Yeah. And then the controls. On, on. Off, off, on, on. Ah, on, on, off, off. On, on. On, and then rotary style frequency on. Yeah, I don't know what that does. In fact, to be frank, I don't know what most of these do. I'm just telling you what I've got. <laughs> it's set teams to work. Yep. I think the radio effects, these are the ones that might um, make it a bit easier. Yes. Um. So I've got all of those off that those first four radio transmit and receive effects that's probably what it is and then below all those wav files i've got the radio encryption effects and mids transmit and receive effects off 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 everything's off in that in that section in fact and it's not as i like you said it's not as realistic but it's I think, to be frank, there's an, I think there's enough to be done without having to struggle to hear the radio as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, all those off, and then yeah, then there's the audio. Left and right, you've got that. And that's all. Yep, I got it then. Uh, and you've got a, you've got your controls. You've got radio one, radio two. You might need a, you might need something for the intercom if there's anybody sitting in the back of your jet. I've got that. I've got that. You got the setup. Yeah, everything cool. else is set. Uh, like, uh, keypad wise, it was just the, yeah, those uh, um, special thing in Bob. So yeah, the, the sign settings. Yeah, super. Great, Phil. Brilliant. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's very frustrating. So it's, yeah. if, you can, if you can get if you can get rid of a problem for somebody, it's a real. Yeah, thanks. Feel like feel, feel like you've done something useful for the day. Oh well, you've trained me, so that's really good. So. <laughs> I didn't train you anything. I just uh, flew near you while you wow. did it all right. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate that. That's great. You awesome. Tomorrow, tomorrow night as well? uh, I'm not Tuesdays. I can't do unfortunately, but I'm, I might be around Wednesday or Thursday. But Mondays is my normal flight. But I don't, I don't think uh, I don't think you'll be around. The OCU for long, so. 
if I don't if I don't if I don't see you for uh, another hawk flight, I'll see you on eleven. I'll see you on eleven, mate. Phil, that's great. Thank you very much, mate. Look forward to it. See you again. Take care, buddy. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.